Texoma Exotics presents Not Another Reptile Podcast. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, everybody. Thanks for joining. There's my partner in crime. Uh, that's right. I uh, had the chance of meeting meeting my my hostess with the mostess uh, this weekend. Uh, it was actually an amazing time that we had at that barbecue with Jeremy Waffles. Yes. Um, barbecue, and uh, I'm glad that I'm glad that I got a chance to meet you because probably the only time right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Never again. She's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. Yes, so um, we we met a bunch a bunch of people in in the uh, reptile reptile industry that um that you finally can actually uh, say I met or you know yes. so it was cool. Absolutely, uh, and I just want to give a shout out to Jeremy for inviting all of us first of all and opening up our home his home to you know Jeff Angie and I letting us crash there for the night you know it just. It helps when you're traveling, and I want to say how, how long was that ride again? Oh gosh, <laughs> I think they said it was uh, around 18 or not, maybe maybe 18 hours mm -hmm. plus. Add another six and a half on for me. Yeah, so that was a good a good drive, and I just got home like what, an hour hour and a half ago. So and, and and diving right into the podcast, baby. Yes, that's it. That's it. Which brings us to our our guest, which I am, uh, uh, I've been, been following him since as soon as, as soon as I seen on uh, him on Brian, uh, Brian's, uh, podcast on, uh, I think it was on what's in your cup and the, and, yes. and uh, nine other ones that Brian has. And, uh, <laughs> and Bubba, Bubba is a great, great guy and, um, so chill and I'm, I'm, uh, I pick his brain and everything. And, uh, you know, he has one of his famous sayings that we'll be talking about and everything. And I just, I just, uh, Really, I'm, I'm excited for this guy. Me too. And I want to give a big shout out to Jeff and Angie for being a sponsor, for getting me to the cookout, you know, the hotel rooms. We had the fun. Thanks, you Jeff know, and Angie. Juicy G never showed up. Yeah, uh, which is very disappointing, but I guess. Yeah, it. but I maybe get one it. day I'll get one to day. Her, So, <laughs> <laughs> And also... Sinking pencil, y'all. Best logo people in the world. Oh yeah, he, he, he's slowly he's slowly going through going through the reptile community. I think a few people from uh from the Patreon actually got got him already from from Blue Line. So yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So a few people got it. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh it's pretty pretty exciting. Keep that it going. Exciting. Well, I will bring out our guest, Bubba. 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 What's up, how guys? Are you? How you guys doing? I'm awesome. Good. How are you? Great. Uh, it's good to see that uh, you're home safe and sound there, Holly. That was a long drive you had there, right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and, and it's still decompressing. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Trying to. And, and forgive the A, I am a Canadian, right? So uh -huh. um, you, you'll, you'll get that from time to time. I do love your accent, though, man. It's awesome to talk to you guys. <laughs> Thanks. I'm from it's Texas. So it's, it's pretty thick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I went to I went to uh, school in Erie, PA, and uh, there was a bunch of guys that came from like Whitby, uh, oh yeah, and um, yeah. Toronto. Um, some some guys in Alberta. There was a guy I think BC, uh, mm -hmm. British Columbia. Um, a few well, guys. It, it's funny you say that because just like just like America, uh, with Canada, there's different accents all across the country, right? Uh -huh. I mean, we're what the second largest country in the world. And we have I literally don't understand a Newfie, Newfoundlander. Uh -huh. right, from Newfoundland, um, if you were to come into my 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 town, like I would never understand them. <laughs> so, now I want to thank you guys for having me on. Uh, it's always yeah. a privilege and a pleasure to be uh, to be a guest on any podcast. So uh, I'm I'm here to for you guys to pick my brain and share what I've learned and uh, what I'm expecting or or what I think. Um, I'm not always the guy that will always declare to be right because right. everything is right for somebody. 
it mm -hmm. may it may work for me it may not work for you um so there's always that preamble i want to give but it's always a pleasure to be on the podcast but you you guys i've watched uh, uh your podcast from before um going into this one and and, and you guys have a lot of fun I'm, I, I, yeah, I we, try. <laughs> we, try, we try we try to uh you know spice it up i mean listen you know everybody has a, has a podcast you know and everybody has their own little niche of what's going on so, right and i and i said i've been telling holly like you know it seems like you know a lot of people want to kind of get away from away from the ball python aspect or 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 reptile aspect and they're talking about you know something else and that but like i was telling you before i mean it's what we love to do like we get into the room we can talk to somebody three hours four hours about breeding and what project and what this and what that. i like all the all the nerds mm -hmm. yeah. oh barbecue. yeah you're going to a barbecue just to hang hang out with all your nerd your snake nerd friends i'm like yes absolutely it's funny, <laughs> it's funny you say that because i mean let's face it we, we've been on a decline of sales is well I'm, I'm not gonna lie i don't know what level of marketing or what level of sales you guys are at what level of breeding you're at but like for me there has been a lull and and paul you're familiar with a lot of videos i produced on my instagram account about how to right. cope with what i've coined the reptile recession because there, there has been oh, it, it's not something we can ignore even jay kabalka uh, has has addressed it many times in his own podcast his own his own uh instagram account i mean a lot of it had to do with COVID, right? When when COVID started, right. everyone yeah. saw the ball python market was an amazing thing because people were looking and searching for a uh, an outlet where they can generate an income stream, and they saw ball python as an opportunity for for reptile enthusiasts. It was a great opportunity because it was something they were they loved doing, and it was mm -hmm. something that they could generate some revenue from. And then when COVID stopped, and everyone went back to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they realized, screw this! I'm done scooping up shit. I'm done <laughs> cleaning rat cages. Yeah, I'm so done. My boss wants me back. I did a great job before COVID, and he wants me back. And 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 I want to go back. And I don't have time to take care of all these serpents. Hmm. You know, and, and that and 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 I was on a previous podcast where that that's where it separates the the enthusiasts and the truists. And, I, and I'm, I always get knocked for this, right? There's enthusiasts, people that love and play with the idea of being a, a, a reptile breeder. And then there's truists where it's like, I wake up, just to give you an idea, I sleep five, six hours a night, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes four. But during when I dream, I think about ball pythons. <laughs> yep. wake up and it's like, Holy shit, I forgot to pair that dude to this girl. <laughs> Right I mean, after breakfast, mm -hmm. I'm racing downstairs. Like I gotta feed the rats so I can feed my ball pythons. I was like, "Oh right, maybe I should add this girl to my Batman project." Mm. Right, and then and then during the day when I'm working, I'm like, "Shit, I forgot to check the shed on this male ball python." <laughs> right? It's just it's just so there's there's enthusiasts, and I'm not knocking them. They're great because that's how we all started. We're all mm. enthusiasts of something, right? And that's how right. we discover ourselves and we discover our passion. We discover we discover uh being becoming a truist, right? And mm -hmm. and some people that will listen to this podcast aren't there yet, and that's okay. Like a truist is someone where everything fails and you're still doing the shit. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you guys know what I mean? Yeah. Where no one fucking believes in you. Yeah. Including your spouse. <laughs> yeah. including and your, your family. Person. Uh, and your yep. family, they think you're fucking crazy. Yep. <laughs> yep. And you're still down there cleaning the shit, mm -hmm. feeding your snakes, and ripping off any stuck shit, doing all the things you need to do to ensure your animals are number one. Yep. Right? Yes. And so, raising the rats that are good and messy. Let's not forget. Oh that. my god. Let's I just got back from vacation. The rat, the rattery. Mm -hmm. Like where I'm from, I can't breed rats. This is gonna blow your minds off. So I'm I'm in a province in Canada where rats are actually illegal. They're two thousand dollars a piece per a fine. So two thousand dollar fine per rat. It's just so do, you have, do, you, do you have like a secret room for your rats? No, 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 no. no I don't break <laughs> There's nothing in my collection that that will ever break uh, governmental oh, regulations. Okay. So. 
Um, I did dabble with false water cobras, but I heard down the road that they were going to be uh, regulated, so I, I got rid of them, right? But um, so what we breed is a ASFs, African soft rats. Now, coming from another province when I had moved, the province I had moved from, rats were totally fine. They were great. But here's the funny thing, and some people will, will knock me for this. When I start breeding ASFs and feeding my snakes on ASFs, and, and for those that are watching from the UK, they're called multis, I believe, right? In, in America and in Canada, they're called ASFs, short for African software rats. What I actually discovered was what, the most amazing thing was they shit less. My snakes shit less. They absorb more of the animal, mm. number one. Number two, my snakes are actually thicker and more muscular. That, 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 that. Now, why is that? Is it because the, 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 they're more protein? Is that like that? Well, that's just it. So if you were to hold a rat, and I, don't get me wrong, I I, I <laughs> always have been a rat proponent. I have my boas on, on jumbo rats because they can't, and rabbits because they can't eat anything else. If right. I give them an ASF, they'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> I want more. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Thanks for the appetizer or the uh, uh, laboos, uh, a moose, but like I want more. So, um, but like what I actually discovered is that my snakes are actually leaner and they're must they're they're thicker. They're like and and they're meaner. They eat better, right? Mm -hmm. Now, it, it isn't for everybody, but I for me, breeding African software rats have been um, more beneficial for nutrition. And so I dug a little bit deeper, and there's a uh, I, I can't remember the first name. God damn it. Uh, uh, the UK guy, Ball Pythons 101. I actually coined him or, or I tagged him on one of my posts. Um, big, huge, muscular dude out oh, of the Gavin, UK. Gavin, you, Gavin? Thank you, Gavin. Yes. He, he feeds all of his snakes on ASS. Mm -hmm. And uh, what he's discovered is the same thing I discovered. Now, there is a downfall to ASF breeding. They take a long fucking long time. time. Yep. Right? I mean, I had, when I was breeding rats, I had rats, and I'm only going into this because I want to make sure that people, especially the regulatory office that watches these videos from time to time, <laughs> they know that I'm not breeding rats. <laughs> right. I'm right. Hooded, right? I want to make that clear. Right. Um, let's, let's, let's air this now. Let's <laughs> make sure that's clear, right? Um, but um, no, well, they take, so when I bred rats, three to four weeks I had mediums that were breeding size. Okay, ASFs take eight to 12 weeks before the Indian 65 grams. But I would feed my snakes a 65, 70 gram ASF and get the same result as I would feed them a 150 gram rat. Wow. Mm -hmm. Right, so. Is that because there's more calories in them? What I discovered was that Oh, and the other thing too is their shit don't stink when they feed them ASF. Mm -hmm. Wow, there was a moment of silence there. I'm like, what? You know, that's pretty good. When, when, you, <laughs> when you feed your snakes ASF, the level of stench is less. And part of this, and 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 the amount of shit actually that comes out of your snake is like a quarter to a third at most mm -hmm. what you would get if you fed them a rat. Now, I'm going to get a lot of slack about this because, oh, bullshit, bullshit, but it's, right. it's what I discovered for me, right? right. So, um, yeah, they shit less. It doesn't smell at all. I was gone for a week in Barcelona. I came mm -hmm. back, and the only thing I could smell was my ASF colony, which I actually hadn't cleaned for three weeks because we took off last minute. My wife works for the airline, so it was oh, like, hey, yeah. we have an open Barcelona. Let's go. Let's go. Right? So, uh, <laughs> I gave him a lot of food. Yeah, a lot of food. Pants are already guys. packed. He's like, I got to see you guys in five days, right? That's right. So, um, so they, they, it's the smell level for breeding the ASAPs was actually a lot lower. The smell level for their, for my snake shit was considerably like, like all of them could shit right now. Mm -hmm. and they'd be like, oh, someone shit. Right. And a lot of it is just, it's just the fat content. So what I discovered at ASAPs is that they're predominantly more protein. There's a lot less fat. Okay. Right? Now, don't get me wrong. If I wanted to get a, a girl fat and ready real quick in three, four months for pairing, I'm going to give her rats. Mm -hmm. I'm center with some ASAPs, and I'm going to give her rats 
to get that fat content because she's going to need the fat content. But if I'm feeding them ASS year-round, I'm, I'm never going back to rats. Do you, yeah. do you feed, do you feed your, your, your guys um, every week? Yes. Or every other? Yeah, so my breeding females I feed every six to seven days, depending on my mood. Sometimes they're four days, whenever I get around to it, right? Uh, but they get fed at least at the very least once every seven days. Okay. And I'll feed them full grown ASFs at 60, 60 to 65 grams. Uh, I actually have a calibrated, I have a six bin stack of racks, and they get calibrated from when I wean them off to two weeks, three weeks, so on and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so I always top. I always feed off the top shelf, and then they elevate up. And then when I clean the rats or the ASFs, the next the next generation goes down to the bottom shelf. So I'm always escalating up, so I know which is my feeders and which is my growers. Okay. Right. That's yeah. really so, good idea. Well, when you look at it. It's a six week to eight week cycle. So I have an eight week rack. So by the time they hit to the eight week the eight week rack at the top, yeah, they're already right. fed off, and they're about 60, 65 grams. Right. right? So. It's a little bit of a science, but I've learned to cope with it. Um, the only thing with ASS is they're not like rats. You, you, rats, you can reach in there and pet one and pick one up. ASS yeah. will rip your fucking fingers off. <laughs> yep. Mine are the same way. So, 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 so Savage. Funny. But it's so funny. I, I hear I, I hear that a lot about ASFs. Yeah. But like some people say that, oh, and and they and they're and they're, they're throwing their hands in there and their thing. Like they, they say they breed they bread. There you go. They said That's they it. bred out the meanness on them. Yeah, <laughs> no. I don't believe it. Well, no, you can breed out. You can breed out chewing. I have not. True story, Paul. I have not had a chew out in eighteen months. Okay. And and that's the beautiful thing about ASS. They're very, they're very. They look at their parents just like rats, but sometimes a rat will get curious and chew. ASFs never get curious. So if you if you call out all of your bin chewers. In your ASF colonies, 18 months, bro. 18 months, I've never had a chew out. Okay. At all. But here's one thing you need <laughs> with ASS. I have learned, I like, I like, dude, this is exactly how fast I am to take the ASS out of the bins when I'm cleaning. <laughs> Just like this. Because I pick them up by the scruff, throw them in, throw them in, throw them into the bin. I will yeah. never, ever, ever pick up an ASF. Some of them are really gentle. Don't get me wrong. There are bins that I've cultivated. There's a rack, actually, I've cultivated. And they're like, hey, man. They're like Homer Simpson. They're like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> you can pick them up. You can play with them. You can you can mess with them and stuff. But they'll never bite you. I still use my tongs because I don't trust them. <laughs> yeah. Do not trust them. Is a lot, for some reason, is it worse than, than a rat bite? Yes. Oh, God, yeah. It is. Pretty You're a good, good bit. You're a kid, right? You had hamsters, no? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Ger you ever been bit by a bit by a hamster? Uh, gerbil, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So gerbil. Oh yeah, even better. So here's the thing with ASFs: they bite once, they don't stop. They go. Ja, 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 ja. Holly, Holly's nodding. She knows what I'm talking. Yeah. About. Oh yeah. Like, ja, 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 ja. Here's the difference: so a rat <laughs> would be like a bumblebee, where you can play with it, okay, bottle it, it'll love you. A rat is a uh, hornet. Or an ASF, sorry. So a rat's like a bumblebee. Uh, it, like a yellow jacket it. keeps stinging you. Yeah. And yeah. then and then an ASF is a yellow jacket. It'll jab you, jab you, jab you. And you're like, <laughs> what the hell's going on? That's an ASF. Right? Okay. They love blood, I swear. Blood, right? They it's love like, blood. <laughs> yeah, they love. They, yeah, and once they get through and they realize they can get through, they just yeah. keep going. They just keep oh. going. Uh-uh, you're right. Yep. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, that works for me. Um and again, it, it may not work for everybody. I, I know in some states, uh, ASFs are deemed wild mice or something like yeah, that. Yeah. They call them field mice, I think, right? Field mice, yeah, and they're illegal, right? So, yeah. So, how many snakes do you have in your collection? I see a bunch back there, man. Well, yeah, that's that. This is the collection behind me. Actually, behind my laptop is about the same. So, we're sitting right now on about seventy-eight breeders. And about 150 hashlings. Really? Wow. So, um, and we were actually down uh, years ago. We were at 250 breeders. And mm -hmm. we're, we are, I mean, again, the marketplace was different back then. We'd sit on 50 to 100 hashlings. So, mm -hmm. again, it's just, it's kind of a trend. 
well, we need to ride this out. You know, a lot of people are pulling out because they're not, they're not truists. They're not, uh, they're more enthusiasts, right? So they lost the vision. So a lot of people are pulling out. The nice thing is if you look at the numbers of Morph Market, Morph Market's kind of the standard. So I don't know if you guys follow Morph Market, you check it out. Yeah. yeah. Um, when COVID smashed down, the numbers, mm -hmm. and I remember this very clearly, region-wide, so worldwide, the most available ball pythons. And I'm sorry, can you hear that cricket behind me? Yeah, I can. <laughs> yeah, I'm really sorry about that. I do that's keep. Okay. Uh, I do I keep. I thought it was in my house. <laughs> no, that, that's my house. I do keep a few uh, uh, scorpions because I'm a big scorpion fan. Mm. I love scorpions. One of the crickets got out, and that mother has <laughs> been in my has been paying my ass for the last six weeks. He's just he's. I look for him every other night. I'm like, where the? I, I just want to squish you. We'll feed you off. Take the legs off and feed you off, but I, I can't find him. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, right. Where were we? You were talking uh, about market, Morph Market worldwide, right? So, so Morph Market. Um, when I uh, before COVID, the density of available snakes region wide was sitting about seven to eight thousand, and at most it peaked at twelve. And then when COVID ended, everyone went back to work and flooded the market with unloading their collection from their breeders all the way to their whole bats, all the way to their available babies, and it, and it spiked to seventy two thousand animals. Yeah. Right. Right now, we're comfortably dropping. We're actually last night I checked, it was about forty-seven, forty-eight thousand region wide. Okay, that, which, is, the which last, is good. Yeah, yeah. It's I was promising. Say, the last time I looked, it was right. at, it was at fifty something. Right. At, so yeah. yes, as of last night, it was forty-seven, forty-eight thousand. Okay. Region wide. Right. Regardless of, of genetics or or sex, forty-seven, right. forty-eight thousand region wide, which is promising. So I figure another year. It's going to start finally normalizing. This happened nine years ago, mm -hmm. right before right. Morph Market. That was that was my question. Is that I like, was going to be like how how long you've been in it and how many times have you seen this happen? At least I'm sure in stages. I mean, maybe not. This is the worst. Maybe it's the worst. Maybe it's not. But when was you said nine years ago? Okay. Yeah. So nine nine years ago, uh, when was the last recession? Uh, prior to that, I actually don't know. I've been in it about seventeen years off and on. Okay. Right. Uh, Twelve years hardcore. Um, as a kid, we all. I, I'm 52 years old. So as no, a kid, you're not. All, oh, <laughs> sure am. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna say something politically incorrect, but Asians don't raise them, right? So yeah. there you go. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, 52. So going back, the first time I actually, um, like my generation, I'm a Gen X kid, right? So. Uh, I'm not going to ask how old you guys are, but I find my sons soft. Why? They're they're the next generation, 17 and 16, and you you can coddle them, you have to talk to them in a different way than my parents beat me, right? So, so I, had, I, had, I had the wooden spoon and the metal ladle. God, man, I hated that wooden spoon. My mom was really quick with that shit. Oh, yeah, it hurts. It leaves a mark. Or the salad, the salad tongs, you know, the... Yeah. <laughs> My God, she's like whatever was in within reach. was like smack. Oh shit! That's yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. right. But uh, but yeah, no. So what I discovered was, and, and it's no different than than the ball python uh, market is that we go back and people are scared and they get scared easy. Yeah. Right. So the last recession we had was about nine, ten years ago. Nine was more accurate, or uh, is more accurate. And um, a lot of the same thing happened. People pulled out um, and the market flooded. But what I discovered was when it rekindled, it came back stronger. And that's why we're, we're at now, right? Like I remember going to uh, reptile conventions and there was like at most 300 people that would show up all weekend. Yeah. yeah. The last reptile convention I was vending at had over fifteen thousand people show up. Holy shit! And 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 I mean, granted, a good portion of that seventy five percent was families because the poster boards go up and 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 the uh, the billboards go up and say, like, "Oh, we have a reptile reptile convention," which is great because and this is where a lot of breeders miss the point of having a reptile convention or vending is like, 
or they see a six-year-old, seven-year-old kid come up to an event, hey, can I hold a snake? And you say no because the convention prevents us from doing so. Mm -hmm. But okay. you give them as much. So what I do is I'll talk to that seven, eight-year-old kid, six, seven, eight-year-old kid, and I'll give them whatever they ask me. Because guess what's going to happen four, five, six years down the road? Yep. Yeah, they're they're gonna remember. Yeah. Exactly. And they're going to remember a little chubby, squinty-eyed brown guy. <laughs> you, know, the game. Uh, you can't forget. Exactly. You can't, you can't forget. forget. <laughs> the guy with the blue sign, right? I mean, right behind me. I'm a branding okay. guy. It's all yeah. about tech, right? The acorn. But but it's about building the enthusiasts. Absolutely. Right? Yep. Every recession, everyone fails to understand that it is our responsibility as breeders, as enthusiasts, as whatever you are. If you're involved with the reptile community, it is your responsibility to spread the word and let the knowledge grow. Mm. Right? And, and and a lot of my, my breed friends, they, they go to these they go to these uh, convention, especially in new ones, is like I, I sold three fucking animals. That's great. How many business cards did you pass out? And they then they, they look at me and like, <laughs> yeah, they do. You're you pass out your business cards because you yeah. never know what's going to filter through. Our job is to to create our future, mm -hmm. yep. not just ours, but my son's heavily involved. I love it. My oldest son Connor, he is. Big That's time into great. reptiles. He's he's looking to make a business out of it down the road, and whatever he That's chooses awesome. to do, right? And that's fucking wicked. And I'm like, yeah. so the first last thing I told him is when we go to these conventions, I don't care how much money we make, I don't give a shit. It's about how many business cards you pass on, how much information you give with each business card, mm -hmm. because down the road, if I was a popper and I I had three dollars and I see a snake for fifty bucks, my job for the next year is to earn fifty dollars, so I can buy my first snake. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's how the enthusiasm grows, because right. people don't know. So I grew up in a generation where there was no ADHD. Mm. Yep. Yep. I grew up in a generation where there was no pill popping. There was like, oh, you have ADHD? Shut the fuck up! It's your parents' fault. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, oh, yeah. But here's where it all breaks down to. I was 50. I'll never forget this. This is probably the most iconic moment in my reptile memory. I was 15 years old, and I was, I've been in and out of juvie for two years at that point. right? And I had massive ADHD based on today's standard definition. And uh, well, it's going to make me cry. But, uh, but, I went to the store called Petland, which is a well-known store now in Canada. Back then, it was the local store. We had Petland. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, yeah, they've grown quite a fair bit. Yeah. yeah. And um, I, I went to the St. Patel location in Winnipeg, Manitoba. This is in Canada. And they let me hold my first ball python. And it was riddled in fucking ticks. I'm not going to lie. It was um. riddled in ticks. And, and, but back then, now, dating me, this is like we're talking 1984. Holy shit! Mm. <laughs> <laughs> 84, 85, at most 86. I held my first ball python, and it was 199 dollars, and it was a normal wild caught. Bit the shit out of me while I was holding it. Right? <laughs> and I went to my mom and said, "Mom, can I borrow 200 bucks?" And she said, "No." <laughs> it took me a year to earn two hundred dollars, and again back then, nineteen eighty four, where today's penny is worth, or back then a penny is worth a dollar today. Um, so I earned the money, and I got my first ball python. And this thing bit the shit out of me. It was covered in ticks. I learned how to get the ticks off, right? And it was a wild caught. His name was Atlas. He was my favorite snake of all time. And mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is, when I held that snake. All I was able to focus. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I mean. You pick up your snake, and you you could go come home after a shitty ass day, the shittiest fucking day you could ever imagine. And you pick up a snake, and the way it moves through your hands, yeah, and looks at you and just kind of doesn't give a shit. And you feel its its heartbeat in your palm, and you feel it undulate through your fingertips. Nothing else matters. Yep. It's great. 
it's a great feeling. Uh -huh. yep. And people lose sight of that. Uh, mm -hmm. I, 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 right? Absolutely. So that's kind of how I got into, into snakes and how I got into reptiles. Was yeah. through that experience. And, and it, to this day, my wife and I have a big fight again, half Spanish. Um, <laughs> I, just, I just run down to my basement and I'll pick up a snake. I don't care what it is. Bite the shit out of me. I don't care. Mm. I pick one up and everything else is cool. That's right? cool. So, yeah. So the whole the whole decompression and it's like decompressing too like you know stressful day this that you come home yeah i'm coming downstairs right yep yeah. yeah yeah that's exactly it right so yeah so what else do you do when like passing out business cards and stuff i've never vended before so i pass them out when i go to shows to the vendors and stuff well you know, have you got have you been to shows before? Like not as oh, a vendor, yeah. but just a spectator, right? Oh yeah. So I'm gonna ask you this and I'm gonna be hard out straight. You can tell which breeder loves it. Mm -hmm. You can tell which breeder is in there for the money. Yes? When they're they're on that cell phone. Right? They're not they're up interacting. Crazy. Yeah. So if you're gonna be a vendor, just remember why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People people we're not, people aren't stupid, man. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, like, it doesn't matter. Oh, the little snake yawned. I fucking love it when they yawn. Look, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, God. Oh, oh, yeah, clear? clear? You have both when they yawn, them. they do that, like, that, that big ass stretch. And they're like, <laughs> shit, Dad, we're going to bed yet? Turn off the lights, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> I fucking love that. Um, no, like, when you go, when you go to shows, Stop it. I'm sorry. I have a few snakes here for you guys to see. And yeah, Luna yeah. is one of my beautiful girls. And she's, we're going to touch base on, on my bell projects. But Luna's, and she's like, I want to play. And she's like, I put in a little bin right beside <laughs> me. Um, so, like, you go to shows and you're like, you can tell who gives a shit and who doesn't. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to call them out on it. Just go to their booth. So, my biggest tip is if you're going to be a vendor, it's really stressful for the setup. It's really stressful for, oh, I get my fucking prices right. Oh, my God, do I look good? Is my signage on point? Or does my table look respectful? What are other people thinking? That's the, the other thing I hate. Mm. Don't give a shit. Don't care what other people think. You have vendors. Luna, stop it. So you have vendors been there, been doing it for 20 plus years. Who gives a shit? What they're afraid to tell you is that they're just as afraid or as nervous as you are for the show. Mm -hmm. Right? When I when I go to a show, I give my all. And I will spend as much time with a little girl and her dad on a $50 first time snake as I would a guy who's gonna pay me five thousand dollars for a snake. Right. Because again, going back to what I mentioned earlier, it's our responsibility, especially in times of recession, to build. The enthusiasm. Right. But people will see through bullshit. We're human beings. Yeah, we can yeah. see body language from a mile away. If you don't give a shit about what you do and you're just doing it for the buck, get the fuck yeah. out. Mm -hmm. well, you can tell by the way they keep their animals, too. Well, yeah. yeah. So it, the, I mean, we, we don't have to go into previous podcasts about the right. retic guy, right? Yeah. I don't want to go into that. I threw no. up about that. It's disgusting. No. I mean, yeah, no, it's I'm, all alleged and shit like that, but I'm, you know, I have enough friends to let me know that that shit is real. Yep. Yeah. And if but like going, off. Yeah. Going to a show, though, and you see a messy snake who's had snake, you know, they shed in their box or whatever, and you come back around to it, you know, a couple hours later, and it's still like that. It's still like that? Yeah. Yeah. Here, here's the thing that pisses me off. A real vendor, if a snake's Snakes will shit you right in their in their display case. It happens. You come back the next day, it's still there. Guess what? Your vendor don't give a shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Period. Give it even like even like if you see it in the morning, it's still there in the afternoon. The vendor don't give a shit. I get. I feel. I feel being a vendor at, at and interacting. You know. I mean, there's people that say that are in front of the tables and they're talking to everybody. You know. And and, and I feel that. 
you know, just how you, I mean, the, how you describe and, you know, that, that passion that you, that you still have, and you've been 17 years, yeah. that's what everybody should feel like. though. I mean, that's, if you, and if it's, you love it, man, it turns walking. into a point, it turns into a point that it's just business. The business side of it is taking over and you're not in love with it anymore. Yeah. And, and ultimately it also comes down to, and there's one philosophy. My wife um, loves me for it. Um, and what we built our passion on my passion specifically is that um, the animals come first. Hmm. No matter yeah. how tired you are, no matter how hungry you are. Yep. They didn't have a choice. It's not like you guys got kids, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, did your kid have a choice to come into this world? Nope. <laughs> he needs to eat. They need to feed. They need to have their ass wiped. They need a house over the roof or a roof over their head, right? Yep. You're saying something different. You bring them into your collection or you give birth, or not give birth to them, but you know what I mean. You yeah. bring them, you help them bring life into the world. That is your responsibility. Keep them housed, fed, and clean. Period. It's not different than any kid. Yeah. Right? You bring an animal into the world, that thing has feelings, has emotions, has needs. So I have walked away from thousands of dollars because customers, and you know the ones that come to your door, you'll know them, right? When they come to your door and you know they're going to take it home, put it in a fucking jar, put it on display. Yeah. You'll know them. I've walked away. I've had, I'll never forget this experience. I had a mother and three kids come to my house and, um, and she had, I think it was like three grand. I can't remember. It was, it was, it was a lot of money, cash. And she was there to pick up two snakes specifically, one for her daughter and one for her son. And, um, and I asked her straight out, I think you have everything set up like I, like I sent you two, three weeks ago. Well, I know I haven't got around to going to the pet store yet and setting that shit up. Well, you know what? You can leave a deposit today and just let me know. Send me pictures or yeah, send me pictures. And uh, let me know when it's all set up. This is like, no, I want to take home today. I, I drove 20 minutes to get to your place. I said, like, that's great. If you want, I can drop them off to your place once you send me verification that you've got your shit set up. Right. <laughs> and she walked out of my house screaming, holding her fistful of money. I'll never forget this. All my neighbors came out of their driveway because she was swearing at me. She was telling me I was a fucking idiot. True story. My wife was like, oh, my God, close the windows. What the hell? Middle of summer. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me yeah. to close the fucking windows. This lady is fucking insane. Yeah. And uh, she was screaming at me. She's like, you're a fucking idiot. I have all this money for you and stuff like that. It, and, and I looked at her. It's just not about that. And she didn't get it. Yeah. 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 Right? Put your fucking animals first. Yeah. Because I don't. Because I, ultimately, you guys got dogs and cats. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right? Yep. <laughs> Imagine your dog going home to a little fucking jar. Yeah. Yep. Right? So, and and I, I've been losing money for the last twelve months. I don't give a shit. Right. Yeah. Whereas before, yeah. I I buy houses, I buy fucking cars with the rain we make from this from this hobby. We've been fortunate that way. Today's marketplace, no, I pay into it, but that's my right. deal. Right. That's yeah. my responsibility. I brought them into this world. I'll take care of them. Right. No different than your own kids. And that's yeah. where a lot of breeders are misplacing that that commitment. Right. And that what that's what separates enthusiasts from truists. You guys get me? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So yeah. Yep. So I yeah I tangent a lot. No, I you're good. No, I, I, that's, but this is all this is all stuff that people have to hear. I mean, like you know, and and and, and 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 learn and I mean. Yeah, we're known for looking after animals. Yeah, we are known. My my brand, our brand, my wife and I, Tack. You want a good animal? You want a healthy one? They don't have a huge selection like the guys that have thousands of snakes. But you right. want a good healthy animal? You want a lifetime support? And I invite every single client, and that's another distinction: customer versus client. I like it every I single. I right? was going to say that because I know, I know, I know your thing. You don't, you don't treat them as a customer. You treat them as no. You go to Walmart, you buy a pack of gum. That's a fucking customer. Right. 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 My life insurance agent. I'm his client. I die. My kids and my wife are looked after. And yeah. that's that's the distinction. 
When you buy a $50 animal from me, you're my client. I don't give a shit about you. I give a shit about the animal. If you have an issue, I have an eye cap. Bring him over. Look after it. Right? You buy a $5,000 animal. I'm hoping when you invest that level that you'll know what to do, but sometimes you don't. Hey, man, he's shitting on diarrhea. Great. Bring him over. Mm -hmm. Right? And again, the truest and the enthusiast, right? Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, no, like client and, and customer are two very distinct different things. I look at every single every single purchaser as a client because now I'm obligated not just to the client, but to their policy or the animal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Um, you look at a customer, I'll go to I'll go to 7 Eleven today and buy a Slurpee. I'm a mm -hmm. customer. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you're, and, and then you're on your way. Client, you're on your way. Your client My slip is done. The relationship is over. Yes. A good point you're bringing up, though, as breeders, you got to be careful who you sell to. That's the other thing, too, that, right? That's a hard distinction to make, right? And you some know? breeders are desperate to to, to, to break even or to, to be self-sustaining. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, you have to revisit why you did it. Right. And that's what I've been kind of coining back into. Why are you doing it? If you do it for money, that's great. But you have to be self-sustaining. You have to you have to look after your animals. Right. And I'm not walking big breeders. Like I'm not a big breeder. I used to be or I'm not a big breeder. I mean, like I said, I had 250 breeders, and for some breeders, that's a lot. I know breeders that have thousands of animals in their collection. But the thing is, they hire people to look after it so that they can sit here and say, "Yeah, no, the animals come first. Right. Whereas other breeders, and we've had that episode weeks ago, where some breeders still have thousands of animals. And don't take care of them. And that's where, it, like, I threw up when I saw those so podcasts. Big. I know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's how I feel. Yep. Same. It's just shitty. Mm -hmm. Right? So, but yeah, at home, like, if you're going to be a breeder, be responsible. Yep. Understand that the animals have as much feelings and, 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 and wants as you do. Mm. Right. Right? So. Yep. And the whole fresh water, let's keep them fresh water. It, you know, right? goodness, ah. it does. It's not hard, people. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> it's it really isn't. not. No, it isn't. And snakes are forgiving for feed too, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, you think about it. Like some of those things were, like they were, they weren't even emaciated dead. They were like liquefied. Yeah, liquefied. Yes, yeah, yeah. liquefied. Like, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. Like, how, how, right? so, how do you pass? Hey, baby. My wife just spoke to She's like, are you still doing the podcast? I'm like, yeah. Hello, wife. Love Hello. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Here, look at this. Uh, can you guys read that? Oh, yeah. Like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> when it's good, it's really good. When it's bad, it's it's pretty good. <laughs> right? yeah, I like it. So you're going to love them. They don't, you, don't, you can't care if they bite you or not, the rassles. You still have feelings. You still gotta love. I know. I know. You told uh, the story behind your your name, Tack. You know the Acorn Collection. The Acorn Collection. Yep. Can you can you elaborate it again? Because I, I loved hearing hearing that that how you how you oh, think about that. I love expanding on that. So one of my very first snakes in not even a collection it was just my hobby. His name is Acorn. I named him Acorn, oh. and um, I named him Acorn. It was, it was actually on a whim, and then. As we, as I started collecting more and visited with the idea of breeding and got into the breeding idea and grew to where we are now and shrunk down to where we are now, um, the acorn. I don't know if you guys know, an acorn grows into the biggest ass trees in the world. Yeah, big mighty oaks. It takes it takes years to get into that, mm. and then when they get to that point, they'll drop other acorns. Right. So. Um, the acorn collection, I, I, I use that name because I look at it as it took me years to develop where we are now. And then when someone comes along and picks an acorn off my tree, and they get to use that acorn to grow their own tree and their own oh. acorn, right? And they into a stoic. And, and every, every client I have, I always want to make sure that they instilled the same values and, and and again i walked away from money because it's not about money mm -hmm. right but you you make sure that they have the same stoic values that an acorn represents or a, a, a great huge oak represents so i've been privileged to have so many clients and i can't name drop because you know some of them want to be private and stuff right. so many breeders where i've helped 
build their own old tree and their own awesome. dance, yeah right? yeah and looking back at that you know like my wife's like what's your legacy gonna look like i was like well just look at my followers yep yeah cool. and some of them are a lot of them and i'm so proud of them so proud of them most of them have surpassed where i'm at today oh that and is neat that's phenomenal right yeah their trees are bigger than mine and i fucking love them for it because and again it's about spreading that enthusiasm spreading that word and growing the community because let's face it how many well we we, we we talked about this already early on it's like how many families and friends support you yeah <laughs> not they very many <laughs> yeah we're all like oh my at, god at that I've point of not, not them not supporting you to now they see how you've grown and through your journey and how successful you know right. and but that's how you i'm not saying it's a promoting or marketing yourself but right. you everyone starts seeing how and believing but that's how that's how amazing it goes it goes for on forever right you build it and they will follow or build it they will come yep mm -hmm. right so yeah yeah sorry so, so right. my next question to you is when you are selling a snake to somebody and you know do you just flat out ask them hey do you have a setup there are certain questions i always ask and that's a great question when you when when the first time the first question i ever asked is have you ever had snakes before or have you ever had snakes before mm -hmm. and there's two 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 things that comes out of it is that the first one is like yes yes i actually have a couple of ball pythons or i have a couple of snakes okay great so do you mind if i share with you my my personal care sheet on how because they're different so if they said i've had boas or i have boas or i have retex or i have Bloods, right. whatever the case. If it's nothing that a ball python is, I know anything outside of a ball python and a bowl constrictor and a uh, a corn snake. If they've already graduated beyond the beginner snakes, then I right. know my ball pythons would be good. But I still said, hey, do you mind if I send you the courtesy of sending you my my own personal care sheet and review it? And then, do you have a setup? Mm -hmm. The next question is like. Well, what do you got set up at home? And then they're like, well, I don't have anything. Okay, great. I'll take you over to so-and-so. So this is the greatest thing about shows. Yep, because yeah. Uh, <laughs> down at Luna. <laughs> she wants to come out. <laughs> I want out. Fuck it. She's pushing out that bitch. She's like, I want out. You know what? I'm gonna, do you mind? Because she's go ahead. Yeah. Oh, did you hear that? Pop that up. <laughs> yeah, she was pop that shit up. She's like, I want out. So Luna is one of my most favorite girls. She's she's a belle. She's my she's one of my. I'm gonna put around my neck. I know it's not great, but I love her. She's awesome. So, yeah. um, you're out. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, she's, she's tired here. of that cricket. Also, she's, <laughs> she's looking for it. Uh, right. So, um, so the beautiful thing about exhibitions and conventions and reptile shows is that there's always gonna be someone that has. All the things someone needs to set up a ball python. Right. So I gauge them. So I actually leave my booth. My son and my wife always come with me. So there's always someone at the booth. And I'll leave my booth and I'll go to some of my friends that I respect. And they have the things. I don't care. I used to carry starter kits and stuff like that. I just don't have the space or the patience anymore. I'm not going to lie. Right. So I'll take them over to my buddy Steve, for example, from More French. And he's got setups. It's great. I'll take them over there. And if they're not ready to make that $200 investment on a complete setup. They're not ready for a snake. They're not ready for a snake. They're not ready for a snake. He's like, hey, listen, how about this? I'm going to propose to you. You leave me a deposit of 50 bucks. And then you let me know when you've got your setup going. You can talk to Steve, take his card. Or you can go with the extreme and get like an actual, uh, what do you call that? Uh, the 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 big actual Terra setup. Just make sure there's a lot of cover. A lot of you know right, so right. i gave i give them the two scenarios they can go with the with the pvc enclosure and uh that's already set up with the heat pad and the thermostat and uh not a thermo thermometer how many god how many conversations you've had about that well i got the <laughs> thermometer from fat Lad or fat that's <laughs> yeah right. no no that, that's not a ther thermostat <laughs> yeah. oh, how many man. conversations you had about that but then so and then just let me know when you set up set up that's good. 
Yeah. And two weeks later, if they say, uh, I'll reach out to them and say, hey, listen, you have the pause in the stake. Do you have the setup going? Well, I'm, I'm kind of changing my mind. Great. Here's your 50 bucks back. Mm -hmm. And I say, I don't yeah. fight with it. I'm not going to push it. Right. If right. the guy didn't set it up, if his enthusiasm didn't get him to set up within the next 48 hours, fuck you. I'm out. Right. Here's right. your 50 bucks back. I'm out. Seriously. Like well, if that, I mean, that's good, though. Well, it's good, but you know what I mean. Like, if you're yeah. really, really wanting that thing, they would have, they would have, they would either have it already, or it'd be there the next day. Forty-eight hours. Yep. Seventy-two at tops because it's Sunday. The shit's closed. Right. Right. Whatever. Right. So if they're not there, then <laughs> <laughs> if they're not there, then then no. Here's your fifty bucks back. Right. Yeah. I walked away for bells. I'm renowned for bells. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So and and uh, and bells are like great because they are the foundation of my revenue stream. They help keep me afloat. Bells are great. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves them. From enthusiasts to uh, the first time keepers, it's like I really want something special, a little bit of money. I don't want a normal. I don't want a pastel, or whatever. I spend more money. What do I want? I want a bell. Blue eyed, beautiful, bright white snake with blue eyes. Mm. Right. So. We produce a lot of bells, and 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 no offense. Every time someone comes in for a bell, guess what? They're set up a setup the next day. Can I please pick up my snake? I really want my snake. Yeah. Right. You can gauge, but shows yeah. are awesome. Our shows are awesome. You just gotta focus on the show and the fact that it's not about selling snakes. It's about spreading the word. That's all when, it is. When you go, when you go to shows, what are your? What's your most is, like, is it the bells you bring? That no. Well, I have two levels, and this I, is where I, you need to be looking at as a breeder that's going to be self-sufficient, self-sustaining, or even profitable. You need to breed snakes that are going to be something that other breeders are going to want. Mm -hmm. and that's just kind of like your 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 frosting, and then you need to look at what does your local marketplace desire. I breed bells, and here's why. And no offense to you guys. But it's like it's like um, it's like pumpkin spice to white chick. So oh, that hey. was aimed directly at me. Hey, I love pumpkin spice. <laughs> right? You go to Starbucks. What flavor coffee you have in October? Fucking pumpkin, pumpkin spice. spice latte. So, so I read bells because not only because I love them, I fucking love them. I mean, let's face it. One of the reasons why you're into ball pythons is what. The first time you saw a blue-eyed, white-ass snake. Not me. You, really? Nope. Awesome. No, 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 no. It was pied. It was, I mean, listen, it was a pied. That's, I mean, that's... Pied. That's yeah. nothing. Pieds, clowns, and bells. Yeah. Purple passions. Right? The darker, the better for me. The darker... Oh, I have a snake you want to see. I'll oh, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> that came out wrong, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, I have a snake. No, we know what you're talking about. It's a snake show. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, no, I produce bells because not only do I love them, because they, they sell. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Right? Right. I mean, a lot of people love bells. Everything from the first time new enthusiast buyer all the way to even like an enthusiast that has a couple ball pythons. It's so from the state. Do you I sell overseas? Believe. I know, not overseas. No. America. I know they're America. really popular over there too. Yeah, yeah they are. Like some kind of a god or something. Um, that yes, in Indonesia, I know that white snakes is deemed as a god. In India, any snake is deemed as a god. I mean, it, to, to chase on culturally, I mean, it's a great idea, but again, that's kind of a marketing thing. Um, my followers buy snakes for me because I just I fucking love them. Right. <laughs> like, like, and, that, and that's what I was getting at earlier when I was talking about like the, the best thing you can do at a show is pass up business cards and sharing enthusiasm because the moment people see how much you love them right. like like it's just it's game over it really right. is you, you come to my show uh, you come to a show I, I only rent one table an 8 foot by 3 foot table Okay. Wow. and I, and I have a crowd 3 to 4 layers deep over someone that has three or four tables. And the reason why is, as you already probably realize, I'm really loud when I speak. Yeah. <laughs> Number one. Number two, someone asked me a simple, simpleton question that for you and I would be really dumb and I really don't want to address. 
I'm going to give them as much as I can give them because guess what? Like 25, 30 years ago is the same fucking question I had for somebody else. Exactly. Yeah. And people forget that. Yep. Right? Yeah. You just forget that shit. But you got to start somewhere. And people yeah. forget that you got to start somewhere. And these people are asking questions, but they're asking because they're curious because you never know who, who the next Bubba or the Jacob Alka is going to be around the corner. Mm-hmm. You right. never know. And it's our responsibility to make that happen. Yep. If we keep, if all of us keep doing that, there will be ever no recessions in any industry in the rental community. I believe it. Sure. I believe right. it. Yeah, the, the, the passion and, 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 the, and the love, and then there's so much drama in between that, right. you know, that, that it's, I mean, like I'm talking about the passion and love that you have. If everybody was like you or, or how, how much passion that you have in your thing. But there's so much drama in between that 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 makes everything like you're like son of a bitch, you know? Yeah. Right, see you yeah. later. Yeah. Sometimes you have to turn off the social media and just be like, "Hey, I'm gonna spend the day in the room with my snakes. I'm not touching anything. I'm not turning it on." <laughs> Dude, just be you. Yeah. Right? Right. And pe- you're gonna have haters and lovers. You're gonna have ten times more haters than you will lovers. Right. But you don't care about the haters. You just you just care about the lovers. Yep. And that's that's what makes. And um, my if you look at my social media, I started a few years ago because um, I'm not I'm old, right? So I'm not really tech savvy. I'm not really into all that shit. But right all of my all of my followers have been with me since before I started my Instagram account because they know mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. They don't give a shit what I produce. Say, hey, man, you think if you, I fucking love that thing. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting on the fence whether I keep it or selling it. I'll take it. Done. Right. Because they know two things. The one's healthy. Number two, I give a shit. Mm-hmm. Right. It doesn't matter what you sell. It's no different than if you go to, like, let's face it. We go to, uh, and I'm in Canada, so I'm gonna. There's grocery stores you can go Correct. to which are no name brands, and there's other stores that carry no no name brands at all, and they carry premium stock. But they treat you like like a king or queen at the store right. you pay a dollar for more. Yep. Where are you going to go? I want to be treated like a queen. <laughs> Sorry. Right? Absolutely. But it, but it comes down to the pride of the product. Yeah. They know that they're better because they care better stuff. Yeah. And they take care of their stuff. So you're prepared as a client to pay more for the same yep. shit you can get somewhere else for a dollar less because they treat you like a piece of shit. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I'm not the only one producing bells for crying out fucking loud. I mean, mm-hmm. granted, I figured out how to produce different kinds of bells. There's different layers of bells. There's the brightest whites, the bluest eyes, purple heads, yellow dorsal, all that amazing stuff. What was right? Was it? It was you. Like, didn't you try to produce something with gray in it? What was that? You? What's yeah, that? What's, what's that? What's my that? Buddy, my buddy, my my buddy. Um, uh, Fozzie from Shogun Snakes. By the way, which I love. Yeah, Fozzie. he's he's pretty cool. He makes yeah, amazing yeah. boa constrictors. He looked at my snake that I produced, um, and he, he he coined it the Arctic Camel. That's it. And I and I miss it this year. I produced it once last year, just to give you guys an idea what it is. And 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 Paul has seen it, just to give you an idea what it is. Holly is that it's a it's a bell with very distinct chalky patches and outlines on it. And I don't have because I, I I should have sent you a picture so you can show it and share it, but you can go on my Instagram and go back about three or four months and it's, you'll find it. And when you see it, you'll know what it is. Um, mm-hmm. But it's a chalky bell with different patches on it, like a pied, but it's all white. Oh wow! And I tried to pr- reproduce it this year. I produced that animal with a partner of mine, uh, Donna Heisler, from um, D and J Exotics, and it was a partnership. And and I was like, what the fuck is this thing? This is years ago, and I was like, "I'll take all the other bells. You can keep that shitty one." Ah! Oh my goodness! <laughs> and to this day, it is oh, the no. biggest freaking breeding regret of my life. So oh, I figured out the, the genetics going back into the history of the, how I produced that. I figured out the genetics. I have the genetics in my my collection, and I miss this year because this girl that's around me, she produced eight beautiful eggs, but their veins weren't that great. Uh, so all of them perished, unfortunately. Okay. One of them, oh, at least one or two of them, would have been the Arctic Camel, but that's okay, Ben. I yeah. Okay. <laughs> She's like, I'm sorry, Daddy, but 
That's, yeah. Isn't she amazing? Yes, she is. She is I'm awesome. so zoned out right now because I've got her around my neck, but she's yeah. one of my keeper snakes, right? She's like, that is how she did. I don't look after. <laughs> What's one of your other awesome snakes that you have sitting right next to you? Well, I know there was one that you wanted, but she's gravid. I actually double checked; she is gravid, so yeah. I did bring out her mate and so put her away. Oh, she's not gonna go back in her bin, I don't think. <laughs> no, Dad, no. Yeah. no <laughs> the little tiny. Really like she has a bigger bin. She's just like this is the, this is the look bin. <laughs> she's she's bending up. So she's we'll like she's bending it. She's like <laughs> yeah, on top of her. So uh, I'm also into bloods and boas. Yeah. You see in the back, I've got boa constrictors. I don't have a lot. I would actually have more if I had more space to grow into boa constrictors. But uh, blood pythons has been a new passion of mine in the last few years. Um, and I'm looking to make some pretty pretty amazing stuff. I'm not going to disclose what they are at the moment. But um, I know that you, Paul has been into my tea paws. I talk blood. about it all the time. Yeah. yeah. And as you see, just like all the other previous podcasts and videos, I just reach right in. Now, blood pythons are notorious to be spring-loaded teeth, oh, but if you spend the time and the energy and the effort, you can wow. literally reach into a ball into a blood python enclosure or a tub and just and just mess the with them. Is, the thing pythons. is, just a beast. Look no, this is the male. This is the yeah. female is twice the size. I know, I know, I know. Oh, right? So the female teeth paws. She's she's gravid, so I didn't want to mess with. Her. I made the uh, uh, I I shared that with with Paul earlier, but yeah, this is a T paws male, and he's amazing. I freaking oh. love this guy, Look right? Yeah. But when I first got him, he was not a nice guy. No, <laughs> right? no. That's but I mean, amazing. look at the reds on that, right? Yeah. So yeah, no blood pythons are so misunderstood. I'm not gonna lie, they're if if they're actually they're very inquisitive. They're very, very affectionate. They really are. Once they learn to trust you, I mean, look at this. How many blood? How many people would you know let a blood python near their face, right? None. Yeah. <laughs> so Guinness is one of my. He's he's a. Um, and Paul might know this. Um, I name all my males after my favorite food is foods and drinks. Oh. And I do know that they're strippers and hookers, but not that, <laughs> not that I knew very many. But uh, so this is Guinness. And Guinness is a beautiful T-Paws. He's actually going to retire in a few years because I've got a uh, a golden eye het T-Paws to okay. go with Guinness's current girlfriend. But, yeah. Wow. Yeah, Guinness is always going to be part of our collection. He's part of the family. He's an amazing guy. When is um, think, the other one late? You said she gravid. What do you think? She's gravid right now. Now, this is my second year with blood. So, uh, I'm, I'm predicting about 60 days before she lays. Okay. Um. This girl, I haven't paired at all. I've been trying to do a hybridized program with her. And again, full grown female, and I'm blindly reaching into the tub. Oh, there's your head. <laughs> but blood pythons are so misunderstood because they think they're just assholes with teeth, but they're actually quite extraordinary. So this is a, a beautiful T negative. I know the light doesn't pick it yeah, up. Yeah, I was saying the light. She just, it just looks yeah. white. Okay. She's just orange and red. Wow. If you look at her face, she just look, look, look at, at her, those tongue flicks. Look at her. I literally that. reach into her tub and she's like, Are we playing dead? <laughs> With you bloods, you need to put more love and more attention into them. Mm -hmm. They do oh. need to be cuddled. They do need to be they need to be respected. And 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 the thing with blood pythons is that people misunderstand them because they had that 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 predetermined they're just assholes with teeth, but when you really, when you really put in the time, you'd be surprised at how affectionate they are. And I'm not getting her; she's just too strong. Yes. <laughs> but, um, but like you just be, you'll be really surprised how rewarding it is. They'll give you back as much. Like this girl here loves TV. Oh yeah, I I, I turned the TV on, and we've actually her and I have watched the entire John Wick series together. <laughs> she, she just, she just sits like, oh like wow, that. how cool Look is that? Hours, right, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's no different than the other species, you know, that are misunderstood, like pit bulls and stuff like that. Blood pythons are in the same family, they're just they just they just want to be loved. Mm. And right. when you spend the time in, 
You know, a lot of people will buy blood python when they're babies and they'll just sell them off or, or trade them off or worse, put them in the freezer because they don't, oh my God, I can't tame this guy. Yeah. You yeah. got to put them in time. You have, you have um, Paul, I know you're scared to go into it because you're going to get bit. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, you get a blood, you're going to get bit. Yeah, I, I, I know. I want one. I want one. <laughs> it doesn't matter to Paul. It's like, I like it. <laughs> you're going to get bit. But I think we I, I shared with you the best one, which is inherently more um more uh, uh what do you call that they're inherently more subdued is the Sumatran line okay the the black bloods if you right. will I mean that's a misnomer it's really shouldn't be right but Sumatran short tails okay. are inherently pretty docile they're a lot more docile than these boys I'll tell you that right yeah. now <laughs> uh, but yeah they, I mean look at this girl yeah yeah she's done she's chill she's like okay dad thank you that's it. That, that, like a baby. <laughs> yeah, right. When you were putting out the reels with with the with the one that's gravid, I mean, it's I I was telling Holly, I'm like, it's like a puppy dog on his shoulder. Yeah, and she's a full grown, full ass, six foot. Yeah. Fucking, she's a beast. Uh, last time I weighed her, she was sixty five hundred grams. Whoa. <laughs> that, was before, Dang. that was before she went gravid. She's probably pushing about seventy five hundred to eight thousand grams right now. She's a wow. big girl. Right, and and I'll reach into her tub blindly and pull her out, mm. and she's like, "Hey, Dad, how you doing?" Right now, you and said you you said you have her in a rack system, or you have her in a, in a I have her in a huge IKEA rack system. Now I use IKEA because they have those massive tubs. If you're keeping blood pythons, um, they do need space, even though they're like they're kind of like uh, ball pythons where they do like it tight. But I mean, I mean, look at the size of this girl. I would not put her in a 32 quart fucking tub. There's right. no way. I, so I, I keep my bloods in a, in a 38 be port. Right? Yeah, exactly. If you're going to that direction, 70, 30 would be perfect. Really? Um, now, some tubs, well, no, sorry, 70, 30 would be great for a grow up. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> now, um, now some some females, too, uh, especially in the bloodline, in the in the, uh, in, in the Brighton, in the Brighton Steinies, uh, in the Brunger's mind, they get really big. Like they have really massive, right? Fortunately, I've, I've been I've been in a position where they've been still fairly, and they're very strong. <laughs> no, they they still they they're still fairly manageable, right? Uh -huh. So you can get them into fifty five quart, sixty four quart, and they're still going to be doing okay. So that's that's why I use the IKEA, the big ass IKEA fifty five quarts for this girl yeah, right now, and she's she's really happy there. Ironically enough, when you move them to a bigger tub, just like ball pythons, but more so, they, they don't eat. They're like, fuck this shit. Because mm -hmm. you have to understand the nature of the animals that you're keeping. Like, this species, they stay under leaf litter by water for six months of time, completely coiled up and spring-loaded, ready for prey. They don't get an opportunity very often to feed. So for six mm -hmm. months, they're underneath this leaf, leaf litter, and they're stagnant, spring-loaded. Imagine, like, being spring Tense for like 180 days. Yeah. Oh. Right? Oh. Waiting for that opportunity to feed. The mm -hmm. only thing that's sticking out of leaf litter is their head. So they don't need a lot of space. I give them more space than what they need because when they shit and piss, I don't want them sitting there for more than 24 hours. Right. Right. right? So, yeah, no, blood pythons, man. Paul, I'm telling you, get yourself mm -hmm. one. Like, once you get one, and I wish I had the space for more, but my true passion is ball pythons. But as a side passion man, bloods, dude, rule. Can you send me? Can you send me a the, the picture of your setup at, with uh, with uh, you said the yep. IKEA, like how you have it? Just send it to me. I want to see. I want to see what it looks like. Yep, absolutely. It's just, <laughs> it's just the racking system, just big grass tubs. And and here's the thing, their hot spot is 82 degrees. Okay. Oh, nice. And they prefer back heat. Back heat. Back heat versus mm -hmm. belly. Oh, look at look at her. Yeah. <laughs> like a little puppy. Yeah, just like a little puppy. Now when I got her, she was not that way. Uh oh. <laughs> was, there, was there a certain somebody that you were that you were looking to buy from off of, off of blood? Like, you know, did you or did you well, just you guys are in the States? I would look at Juggernaut. Juggernaut, they made they produce amazing animals, but you can see the passion in their vlogs and in their in their posts. Like just, Juggernaut. I, I hold on. He's the one that he wasn't he the one that I just sent you that picture for the, he he's yeah. the one that, that produced the all white. What the fuck? How crazy is that? Right? <laughs> Holy shit. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, uh, wait a minute, I, I know that guy. Yeah. If you guys are looking for bloods, there's juggernaut, there's cold blood, there's uh oh god, I wish I had his name right now. No, you, you with blood pythons, they they do they're very temperamental, they're not like ball pythons and boas and corn snakes where they're those ones are fairly forgiving. You fuck up by a degree or two or humidity levels of blood python, you will know. Okay. Oh. So blood this. pythons, it's it's not an intermediate, it's not I wouldn't even put it intermediate, I'm looking at advanced because their humidity levels have to stay constant, their temperatures have to be spot on. What's your, what's your humidity at? Oh wow. Sorry? what's your humidity at then? 60, 65. 60, 65. Is, right? that all, is that what's in your room right now anyway? No, like, that's in their bin. Okay. I keep my bloods in the, that's why I was talking to you earlier. Like yeah, I keep yeah. my bloods in a separate part of the room where okay. the humidity is a little bit higher. My ball pythons are fairly forgiving. They'll they'll be happy between 30 and 30 and 30 and 50. Yeah, okay? yeah. And then when, when they're shedding, just like everyone else, is so just pour more water in their bin, yep. they're good to go. Blood pythons are very specific. They're mm. they're a little bit more work. Um, a lot of people disregard them. They think they can keep them as ball pythons. They are not much more, but they're a little bit more work. But I'll tell you right now, man, that little bit of work to keep their humidity levels up. I mean, thermostats will keep them 82, 84. So that's, yes, I know. Uh, <laughs> uh, 82, 84. But humidity levels, you need, you just need. Uh, here's the irony. Ball pythons, you keep them too wet, they get RI. Yeah. Right? Ball pythons, I mean. Blood pythons, you keep them too wet or too dry, they get RI. Uh -huh. It's the complete opposite scale. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right? But it's so worth it. Oh, how do you how do you, so you keep how do you keep a uh, certain the, the certain uh, humidity level at a constant? Well, a lot of it is just pouring water. I mean, right. I live in a very arid region of Canada. Okay. So I mean, humidity levels here in the winter are sitting at thirty, which really sucks during that shade yeah. four, and four month window. Yeah. Um, but uh, again, ball pythons are afraid of forgive me for that. Blood pythons are not. So you just gotta spritz down their their their, their tubs more. Right. Just be on top of it. Like each, every blood python has their own little uh, uh, humidity gauge, so I okay. make sure that they're they're right. spot on. Um, I don't pour it right on the animal or in a hot spot. I actually pour it on the cold side because half the time, believe it or not, you'll find your blood python sitting on the 70, 70 degree side. Uh -huh. They they love it cold. What's you, sorry. No, keep going. <laughs> no, in, in the wild, you'll find blood pythons, especially uh, bright and steiny. Um, in the wild, you'll find them right by the water's edge where there's no sun because they're underneath a lot of foliage and underneath a lot of trees. Um, and the temperature there is 65 to 70 mm -hmm. all year round. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. So you'll find a lot of your blood pythons on the wet spot off the hot side. The only time I find my bloods on the actual hot side is when they feed. To help them digest, and that's it. Oh, yeah. yeah, but that's man, I'll tell you, Paul, get one. Fucking get one. <laughs> what uh, what substrate do you use? Do you use or what do you use? Paper? No, I actually I put them on. Um, and this is gonna piss you guys off. I put them on pine, but there's two types of pine. There's the pine you can get from the pet store, or you can get the the one that's kiln dried. Right? Everyone knows that pine fumes and and cedar fumes are brutal for reptiles, especially mm -hmm. snakes. But if you give them double, and that's the other thing. So there's single kiln dried. So they're I dried and killed once. And there's a double kiln, kiln dried. I get mine from actually horse and tackle shops. Okay. Where they're double kiln dried because they can't afford to have any kind of pests, any kind of mites and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I actually keep them on that because that, that I find that that holds humidity well. It's really inexpensive. Like you can get a six cubic foot for eight bucks. <laughs> I keep all my balls on it. I've been doing that for, for years, and I've never had any issues with uh, with, um, with humidity and never had any issues with um, uh, respiratory issues because of the fumes because there are none. Mm -hmm. And, dude, they, spot cleaning is so amazing because that, that's, that, that stuff actually clumps together when they shit and piss. It's awesome. Wow. Yeah. But you got to be mm -hmm. careful. Make sure it's double kiln dried, not single. What's so kiln dry takes away what? the pest, but it doesn't kiln. take away the kiln. Double kiln dry. Yeah. 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 So it takes away the pests on the first, but takes away the oils, which are harmful for reptiles, mm. on the second dry. Oh, very cool. Yeah. All right. 
That's what I actually use it in my rodent beds as well. So it yeah. works out. <laughs> and it works out great because it's super absorbent and it doesn't have fumes. It doesn't the, the a lot of a lot of people will use like regular pine shavings for their rodents. Mm -hmm. And 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 some of them won't say this, but if you do that, you'll find that a lot of your rats or your ASS will develop the sores or the uh, the gross, the cancerous gross in their nipple mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. because of the fumes or the, the oils. Yeah. You go to single or double kiln dried for your rodents, you won't get that. They'll last yep. longer and they'll live better. Yep. That's true. Well, That's Bubba, true. I am so glad you decided to come on our show. Sorry, it took longer you, than it should have. No, oh, no, you're not. good. That's you're a book of knowledge, perfect. man. I could talk to you forever. <laughs> oh, man, and I, I love the subjects that we, we touched on, you know, about the, the shows and making sure your customers have what they need. Yep. Very important, you know. That's something that not a lot of people think about. Oh, and, and if they forget. do, they really don't care. They're just wanting to push an animal. Right. Yeah. So that's amazing. And well, thank you again for having me. Um, Absolutely, it's been a pleasure. If you ever want to reach out to me at any time, you know where to get me. Hmm. Well, if you'll just stay backstage for a minute, well, because on, I one really one, want to one, see. One more thing. What's your hey, famous oh, line? Oh, oh. <laughs> Here, let me hit him. Hmm. He's My a fly. <laughs> it's what I, it's okay. what I love. As a tribute to Paul, my 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 tagline is "Lock what you love." Oh, if you don't right. love it, don't lock it. That's don't it. produce there it. There you go. <laughs> right? And go ahead and say your line. I don't have a line. Unbelievable. <laughs> there you go. Unbelievable. <laughs> Thank Thanks you again, guys. for watching, love man. You Thank you, Bubba.